Okay, so this is the first of my videos that I'm going to be putting together for the first semester of nursing chemistry. Um, of course, I specifically put this together for my classes, but it can be used by anyone. Just for reference, um, I do currently use the Timberlake 6th edition um, text in this course. Okay, so I think that most people have heard of the scientific method. And the scientific method is simply the way in which we test things um, to see whether or not something's accurate, something works, um, to figure out if something new could occur. Um, the scientific method is something you use in every single day of your life. You may just not realize it, or at least I do. I know that for sure. So if you have, it starts with just basically having observations that form questions. Um, this could be something that's very big and broad such as, um, is it just me or do, do the best shows come on at seven o'clock at night? Anything that you can think of that would be a general question or observation. Um, you might then form a hypothesis. My favorite shows um, come on at seven o'clock at night or it's usually an if-then statement. If I watch the shows at seven o'clock at night, then that one will be my favorite, okay? You then perform an experiment. You perform experiments all the time. And your experiment may be, I'm gonna turn the TV on at seven o'clock and see what comes on. Um, and if I like that, and then you collect data. Yes, I like that. No, I did not like that. Whatever that may be, okay? And then you draw conclusions. Maybe you find that that is something you didn't like. Um, maybe instead you find that, mm, no, eight o'clock was better. So that's how you draw your conclusions and that goes back to your hypothesis. You may reform your hypothesis. Eight o'clock, if I, if I watch shows at eight o'clock, then I'm gonna like them a lot. It may, you may find over lots of iterations of this, it's not necessarily a time that you wanna watch. Maybe it's a type of show show or maybe it's a um, specific channel or theme that you prefer to watch. So we revise this as we go through and repeat it over and over again. Um, that's just sort of how we do things in science as well. So we find what works and we go, hmm, I don't think this worked and here may be why and for, reform my, our hypothesis and go back through this cycle. So this is the center of what we do um, in science. And it's really important, especially when we deal with things like medicines to draw the appropriate conclusions. Um, make sure that when you do these types of, of um, iterations, that your conclusions are actually drawing conclusions about what your current hypothesis is and that you aren't going off on a tangent. So if, if our hypothesis was, if I watch TV at 7 p.m., then I will like the shows. Your conclusion should deal with exactly what that was and not necessarily, but I like that show at 10 o'clock over there better. Um, you know, you actually have to address the, the question that's being posed or the hypothesis that's been formed. Okay, so um, we have to repeat this quite a few times and I mean like the the expertise of many, many different scientists, many different hypotheses, and um, many different experiments. If those will come together and converge and we have a clearer picture of something over a long period of time, then that could be referred to as a theory, okay? Now, um, I often hear, well, you didn't prove that that happened yet, or, or you know, that science has not been proven. In truth, you can't prove anything in science. You can only disprove that it works. So, because there's always that reasonable, the like, teeny bit of doubt that you may not be able to disprove that something crazy doesn't happen like an asteroid comes down and destroys the whole thing. Um, so, there's still going to be that type of thing that's, that's left in the background. If you have a theory that has tested so long and is so known to be true, it can eventually become a law. Now these are very rare. Um, the ones that you might know well are Newton's laws of gravity, but 
keep in mind even these only work in closed systems. You go down to a, a smaller system and they don't necessarily work and we have seen that. So those have even been refined as we go and look further in science. So you can't prove anything in science but we certainly can assume over long periods of time that um, through much experiment that then data that's converged that a theory um, is a working type of thing and we can move on, okay? Okay. In science, we also use the scientific notation. We use this a lot to report our data simply because can you see the difference really quickly between those two numbers? I can't. It's so easy to get lost between those two. If instead we write it like this, this is the same thing as writing these two. They are different. When I write it this way, it's much easier for me to see the difference between that 8 and that 9 immediately. Okay, So I don't have to go through and count the number of zeros every single time because this is basically an account of those zeros. Here's how we do it. Let's say you have a huge number. You already assume that the decimal is right here. Well, if you then could move that decimal, you want to move it to after the first non-zero number or whole number, like that one right there. So I want to have the one and then a point right there, the decimal point right there. I'm going to move that, as I see, as you see down here, one, two, three, four times. By doing that, I'm saying that this would be um, a factor of 10 four times, okay? So the way that I'm going to write that is 1.2 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. Big numbers are going to have a positive at this um, 10 to the power of a positive power, okay? If you have a very small number on the other hand, you would move it to the right. And that's going to be reflective of having a negative number up here, okay? So here we're going to move this decimal to where it's after that one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. 1.25 times 10 to the negative fifth. Write down all of the uh, whole numbers there and make sure you practice this. So, just so you can practice this, let's do some practice together. Let me see if I can find a, yeah, this is fine. So here, this is gonna be less than one. So we know we're gonna have a times 10 to the negative I'm sorry, let me find a new pen. Might write a little bit better. Here we go. We're going to have a times 10 to the negative because this is less than 1, right? I'm going to move my decimal point so it's after that 9 and it's going to the right 1, 2, 3 times. So this should be 9.54 times 10 to the negative 3, because I moved it 3 times to the right. Okay. Now, we're going to move this instead to the left. Here's my decimal point here. I want it to be after that 2, so it'll be 2.1 times 10 to the, and it's going to be a positive, we have to figure out how much. We're going to move it now, 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, times 10 to the sixth. Okay. We're going to have 7.65 here. Let's move it to the left. That'll make it a positive. One, two, three, four, five, six, times 10 to the sixth. That's how you do that. Here we've got more numbers, but that's fine. Or not, more digits. 1.12, here will be the decimal point. Don't worry what I mean about more numbers. Okay. Here's a decimal point. We go 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's going to be a positive times 10 to the 4th. 
So that's a big number right here. Okay. It's still going to be 3.114 times. It's a huge number, so we have to something times 10 to the something that's positive. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You see how you do those commas to make things a little bit um, easier to see? This is even easier to see than that, right? As I was saying in class, this may not seem like it's that different from 10 to the 14th. But think about if you were 10 times smaller than you are and how your view of the world would be completely different. And then imagine if you're a hundred or a thousand times smaller. That would be radically different. So keep that in mind. Four million. First we have to draw that out. So that would be four thousand. That would be four million. So that should simply be four times ten to the sixth. Now I'm going to note the fact that I am not adding an extra point zero or anything like that. We'll come back to that the next um, time we talk. But this 4 is the one that we're given as a number, so we're just going to leave it like that, okay? Now we're going to do something that's smaller than 1, so we're going to go times 10 to the negative something, okay? And we're going to move this to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 1.23 times 10 to the negative 8th. Hope you all are catching on now. It's 5.94 times 10 to the, we just move it one time, so it's negative one. Okay. 1.37 times 10 to the negative, we know. One, two, three, four, negative four. This is a really small number. It's gonna be 1.2 times 10 to the negative, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's the same thing as 1.2 peak meters. Very small. Okay, it's harder though to convert from scientific notation to your standard numbers. So things to keep in mind if it's negative power of 10 up here, 